All right, hello and welcome back. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers. And today we are going into the Zeke uh, room for the SOC Level 1 uh, pathway and it's the Security Operations Center uh, Level 1, which is for the Junior Security Analyst or the Security Analyst role. And uh, we're going to be talking about Zeke. Uh, it used to be called Bro. And it's a an, uh, threat detection, uh, specifically threat detection, I believe, but it also does a little bit of uh, threat protection or, uh, excuse me, um, intrusion detection as well as intrusion protection. But specifically, I think it's, it falls more on the detection side of things. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be going into Zeke today. It is a subscriber only room, which means that you need to have the paid subscription to try Hack Me, which is very affordable to get. And if you use the link in the description below, you'll get an extra discount on top of the already affordable price. So you'll get a $5 credit towards it and you can just kind of begin your activities right away. Uh, if you don't want to do that, if you want to just download Zeke on your own machine and follow along that way, you're also more than welcome to do that as well. It is an open source software, so you can download it for free and you can start messing around with it and essentially just follow along this video the same way that we would uh, in any other scenario. So as long as you like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, you will get notified the next time a video comes out in this pathway. And I think there's actually a second, yeah, there's a second video for Zeke as well, so you can get notified of that video as long as you're subscribed and you have that notification bell turned on. So uh, without further ado, we are going to jump into the introduction of the room and kind of get, get cracking with this thing. Okay, so the Zeke introduction, uh, formally, and I'm just gonna get this machine started right here. So formally uh, known as Bro, it's an open source and commercial network monitoring tool, traffic analyzer. Uh, the official description is that it's the world's leading platform for network security monitoring. Uh, flexible open source powered by defenders. Uh, it's a passive open source network traffic analyzer. Many operators use it as a network security monitor to support uh, suspicious or malicious activity investigation. Zeek also supports a wide range of traffic analysis tasks beyond the security domain, including performance measurement and troubleshooting. So uh, the whole idea is to get a general understanding overview of what Zeek is, how to work with it, and how to investigate capture traffic. Uh, it's a tag team to the network fundamentals room. So if you don't have a fundamental on networking, it's kind of good to get that going for yourself. And then there's obviously the virtual machine that's attached to it that allows you to use Zeek and uh, kind of just explore what it does and use some of the uh, log files and everything that are available. So uh, that's the kind of like the brief overview, the general uh, helicopter view uh, description of Zeek and what it is and what it does. And let's jump into how it actually works. Okay, so introduction to network monitoring approaches. Uh, this is kind of a, just an overview of network monitoring in general. Uh, it is highly focused on IT assets like uptime, which is the availability of the asset, uh, device health and connection quality. So the performance of it, the network traffic balance and management configuration. So monitoring and visualizing network traffic, troubleshooting and root cause analysis are also part of network monitoring. Uh, this model is helpful for network administrators and usually doesn't cover identifying non-asset in-depth vulnerabilities and significant security concerns like internal threats and zero day, so on and so forth. So network monitoring is not within the SOC scope, the Security Operations Center scope. It is linked to the enterprise IT and network management team. Network security monitoring is focused on network anomalies like rogue hosts, encrypted traffic, suspicious service, port usage, malicious suspicious traffic patterns and an intrusion anomaly detection and response approach. So monitoring and vi visualizing the network traffic and investigating suspicious events is a core part of network security monitoring. This model is helpful for security analysts, incident responders, security engineers, threat hunters, covers identifying threats, vulnerabilities and security issues with a set of rule signatures and patterns. Network security monitoring is a part of SLC. So Network monitoring is not, network security monitoring is because it's Security Operations Center and so SOC, so on and so forth. <laughs> um, and they're separated between tier one, two, three analyst levels. So uh, this is kind of the beginning of 
IT help desk type of a world is when you kind of get into it. They want a tier one, tier two, or tier three help desk person or a tier one, tier two, tier three analyst person. So Zeek is an open source commercial passive network monitoring tool, as we already discussed. And it's supported by several developers. Uh, there's enterprise ready fork of Zeek. Therefore, it is both open source and commercial and it differs from um, known monitoring IDS IPS tools by providing a wide range of detailed logs ready to investigate both for forensic and data analysis. So it provides 50 plus logs in seven categories currently. So that is pretty hefty. It's pretty heavy duty. I'll, I'll admit that myself. Um, so we have the uh, the difference between Zeek and Snort, right? So we've done uh, several videos. I think I did three videos on Snort already. So um, it's they have both their pros and cons essentially. And this is a side-by-side -side comparison. I am not going to read all of this for you, but it's good for you to know. Uh, so if you're more than well, you you know, if you want to read it, you're more than welcome to just pause the video, pause the video and read it. But uh, the main different purposes for this is network monitoring, in-depth traffic investigation, intrusion detection in chained events. And for Snort, it's intrusion detection and prevention and stop known attacks and threats. So the Zeek architecture looks like this. It has two primary layers, the event engine and the policy script interpreter. So we have event engine, policy script interpreter. So the network feeds packets into the event engine. The event engine uh, used the policy script interpreter to create some kind of an output and it either logs everything for you or it gives you a notification right away. Some of the frameworks that we're going to be looking at right here are the uh, logging. Yeah, so logging, notice, input, configuration, intelligence. How do, which direction does this go? Okay, so let's see. Uh, logging framework for all cases, uh, having ID, IDE on, or having ID, this I feel like is a misspelling on each framework's functionality can help users quickly identify an event of interest. So I don't think these are any, like, I don't, I was, I thought that it was like a category type of thing or like each column was something else, but I think this is just a bunch of different versions of frameworks that are available uh, for Zeek. And then, of course, we have the Zeek outputs that typically goes into the Zeek logs in the opt folder. Uh, the logs are covered in task three, so we're going to go more deep, uh, deeper into that later. And uh, it is a command line tool from what I understand. Uh, so there are two operating options. The one is running it as a service and the second is running it against the PCAP. So before working with it, let's check the version of Zeek instance with the following command Zeek V. Uh, so it gives you the version and then now that we know that it's installed we can start it as a service sorry about that i don't know if you heard the honking but people kind of lost their mind over here <laughs> um so we can start it as a service and we're going to use uh, zeke control module which is run by this command and uh, requires super user permission so it's sudo uh, you can elevate the privileges uh, and switch to the super user account to examine generated log files uh, and here we can manage Zeek service and view the status of the service primary management management excuse me is done with three commands status start and stop and so you have it here so Zeek control status start status stop status so when you do Zeek control you kind of just go into the control panel and this is the new prompt instead of it being root and then you do status to give you whatever is going on and it says it's stopped and then you start it and then you do status and it's running and then you do stop again and the status and it stops. So that's basically it. Uh, you can also use the control mode with the following commands as well. So Zeek control status, so on and so forth. So you can just immediately do it uh, with this. So meaning you press this and then you, or you type this and then you do stop to stop it or to start it instead of doing it, pressing enter, and then doing stop, start, so on and so forth. Uh, PCAP processing mode logs are saved in the working directory, so whatever your whatever directory you're actually in, and then you can just do LSL or to show you whatever the 
the blogs are that have been created in our specific directory. And uh, the parameters are as follows. I don't think this is all of them, but it's just a few. So you have R to read. So read and process a BCAT file. Dash C to ignore checksum errors. Dash V for version information. And Zeek control to get into the control module. So investigating the logs will require command line tools uh, such as cat, cut, grep, sort, and unique. So I should so, and there's a Zeek cut that is proprietary or unique to Zeek. And we're going to cover them in the following task. So what is the installed Zeek instance version number? So we actually have to now open the split view to run some of these commands and see what versions of Zeek we got installed and all that stuff. So um, we're going to open up the terminal because it is a command line tool. And I think I can, uh, I'll just go back and forth with my two different monitors and just give you a full screen the entire time. So we will do this. We're just going to open this in a full screen. And hopefully this will be working. Perfect. So we have that. So we're going to zoom in here. And okay, so the first one is what is the install, right? What the question is, yeah, what uh, what version of Zeek do we have? And so the, ver the simple way to do that, and this is like this with a lot of tools, it's just dash V. So it shows you the version installation. And for us, it is 4.2.1. There you go. What is the version of Zeek control module? So if we do the Zeek control module, as soon as we type it, it should come up. So Zeek CTL. So new version detected. Uh, da, 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 da. But right now it's 2.4.0. That's the one that we're on right now. So even though there's a new version, we're currently on 2.4.0. And so investigate the sample PCAP file. What is the number of generated alert files? And so the exercise files is probably what we need to do. And where is it? Is it? Oh, I see. So it needs to be for task two. So it's inside task two and there's a PCAP file. So I think exit probably gets us out of this. Yep. And so LS, we're right here. So CD desktop forward slash. Uh, exercise files for slash task two. Oh, it needs to be caps locked. So CD desktop exercise files task two. There we go. And so to do this, we're just going to do Zeek uh, run, right? Or Zeek read, excuse me. So Zeek uh, read and then the sample PCAP. And there's actually a really good uh, extra command, which is the errors. So you want to kind of skip errors, which is the capital C and then lowercase r. And then we're just going to run and read the sample PCAP file. OK, so there we go. So now it's going to output a bunch of logs for us. So what is the number of generated alert files is what we need to look at. So if we do LS here, there should be several files here. And there is alert, I guess. I wonder if it's just the log files that we're counting. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to say eight. Yeah, that is the correct response is the correct answer. So they call it the alert files, but I guess they they refer to log files as alert files. And so that's it. So we have the, the number of our alert files. So that being said, we can move on to the next task. Okay, so Zeek logs uh, come in a bunch of different categories. So we have the uh, why is this so zoomed in? So can I just do that. There we go. So there is the category under the network, which is network protocol logs, and it comes in all of the different formats. Then we have files. So files.log, OCSP, etc., etc. You have the net control, which is network control and flow logs, detection, and possible indicator logs, network flow logs again, 
Um, so there's net control and a network observation. So I guess they're a little bit different. Then there are miscellaneous uh, log files that come, and then there's the diagnostic files that come. So a lot of logs. As uh, you read from the intro, there's 50 plus, I think, categories of log files. Um, then there is frequency of these logs that we can generate. So if it runs in the background, you kind of can have it be done uh, daily where it just updates these logs for you. And then you can have each session that either you're logged in or each time that you uh, run Zeek that it'll create certain logs for you. So there's the known hosts, services, certifications, uh, or certificates, excuse me, and software. So this is the list of the hosts, etc. So it kind of goes uh, respectively as such and then you have per session so the notice the intelligence and signature logs so anomalies detected by Zeke go into the notice uh, traffic contained malicious patterns and everything goes inside Intel and then list of triggered signatures based on known vulnerabilities and uh, exploits goes in this signatures log then you have uh, brief log usage primer table so the overall information goes in these things, and I think we had a few of these already. Protocol-based will go in these, and then you'll see it. it's as the name of it implies, and you kind of see if it's protocol-based or not, or what protocol would probably be logged in there. Then the detection, so notice signatures, PE, trace route, and then uh, known host, known services, software and weird.log is based on observation and I guess uh, patterns of activity and things like that. So uh, you can categorize them before starting an investigation. Therefore, finding the ev evidence anomaly will be easier. So the given table is a brief example of using multiple log files. The overall info is to review the overall connections, shared files, loaded scripts and indicators at once. This is a first step of the investigation. Then there's protocol based to see what types of protocols were used and uh, you can go deeper into those. Um, then there's detection. Uh, use the pre-built or custom scripts and signature outcomes to support the findings for, uh, you know, by finding additional indicators or linked actions. And then there's observation, the summary of the host services software and expected activity statistics will help you discover possible missing points and conclude the investigation. So uh, we mentioned the pros and cons of Zeek logs at the beginning of the task. So let's look at how they actually work. There's recall one. Uh, Zeek logs are well structured and tab separated AC files. Um, so reading and processing them is easy but requires effort. Recall two is investigating generator logs will require command line tools like cat, cut, grep, and unique, and additional tools, which is Zeek cut. So opening a Zeek log with a text editor would be essentially doing it with, I guess, cat, or you could even do it with just a normal text editor. And just uh, in Linux or Ubuntu, I think is what the machine is that we have. It's called Pluma, Pluma. And, uh, it might be easier. I think it is honestly easier to do it inside something like Pluma because it's searchable. It's easier to search through it and it's easier to modify it and you can click around. Whereas when you're inside the terminal, you have to use the arrow keys to navigate and move around. And it's just way easier to do it inside something like Pluma or your preferred text editor. Um, the above image shows that reading the logs is not enough to spot an anomaly. Logs provide a vast amount of data and you will need to have technical knowledge and event correlation ability to carry out an investigation. It's possible to use external visualization and correlation tools such as ELK and Splunk. And this, these are very important because they can do a lot of the sifting and sorting for you. And then uh, you, you kind of get a summary of what's going on and they'll even give you warnings and notifications and stuff like that. So in this room, we're supposed to learn the hands-on approach and how to actually do it manually so that you are a very well-rounded person, right? So um, the Zeek cut in action is what we're trying to accomplish here. Let's extract the UID protocol source and destination hosts and source and destination ports from the connect log, uh, which will uh, we will First, read the logs with cat and then extract the event of interest with Zeek cut. 
to compare the difference. So uh, that's the whole idea behind this, uh, the series of questions that are going to come up. So we're going to go to task three for this one, which is going to be, excuse me, it's going to be right here. So for this, I'm just going to go back one and then I'm going to go to CD task three. And so we'll be in here. And so we're going to run the uh, sample PCAP file again. We're going to investigate the sample PCAP file. And from there, it's going to generate a series of logs for us. And then from there, we're going to run a series of commands to see what we can find in there. So the command is Zeek C R or it's probably sample, right? It's called sample.pcap. I'm going to guess that it is. There it is. And do we get logs? We did get logs. Yeah, there you go. So the first question is investigate the sample and then uh, investigate the DHCP log file. What is the available host name? So first, let's see if we can do cat uh, DHCP.log. And it's not a very large file, so we could probably manually see what the host name would be. So you have uh, all these different things and then that we're looking for a host name. OK, so the way to do that is actually we would do the cat dhcp.log and then create a little pipe and do Zeek cut. And then we're going to just choose which specific things that we want. So we're going to literally pull out all of the stuff that they want us to do. Um, uh, and actually, it's just one thing from the dhcp log file that they want, which is the host name. And so there the parameter is host underscore name. So you just do that and it gives it to you right here. So it's micro nopics, I guess. And the next one is we are going to look for the through the DNS log. So DNS log and it's going to give us a bunch of information. And the name of the parameter that we're looking for is what's important so that we can use Zeek cut to cut it. And so we want the number of DNS queries is what they're asking for. Um, it could be a few things because there are, you know, there is query here and then there are several instances of the word count. So I am just curious what it's going to look like uh, when we run it like this. So let's see what we can do here. So we'll do uh, cat dns.log again and then we're going to do zeek cut count query. Let's see what that shows us. So these are all of the queries, I guess. Yeah, so um, based on the just that there's only two things that were queried, so we can just count it manually ourselves and it will, the respond. The answer for the question is two. Um, but uh, I really am curious what it would look like if we just used count. Yeah, it's not even going to show us anything. It's just a bunch, a bunch of blank spaces. So, okay, moving on then. Uh, we're going to now investigate the con.log file to see what's in here. And it's also a bunch of information. And so what is the longest connection duration? That's what we're looking for. So something that has to do with duration. So let's see what options are available here. Oh, there's something literally called duration. So we're gonna do the same thing, cat, con, and then zeek, cut, duration. And the longest one, the longest one is 332, I think. 325, no, 332 obviously is higher. <laughs> so 332, I believe, is the longest one. Yeah, it's the longest query is 332. So let's copy that and see if this is the actual right answer here. Yep, that is the correct answer. So Zeek cut is the new command that we've learned to use and it is pretty useful honestly when you kind of figure out what you're searching for it's pretty useful to be able to parse through the log files using Zeek cut so moving on to the next batch or the next task excuse me okay so this is it's called command line interface kung fu recall and processing Zeek logs um, and basically, uh, there is a, 
there's a very interesting series of commands. It's like it's almost like a big cheat sheet of what you can do in Linux to try to find these things. And so the critical point is what if there is no function button feature for what you want to find and view or extract, right? So that's uh, a key element here is what if there was no specific title or something that you for the thing that you want to find. So having the power to manipulate the data at the command line is a crucial skill for analysts, not only in this room, but each time you deal with packets, you will need to use command line tools, Berkeley packet filters, which is uh, it was an interesting thing that I found in the snort room. That was the first time I encountered that and regex or regular expressions. So to find view and extract the data that you're looking for. So this task is a cheat sheet to help you write command line queries for your event of interest. And there's a lot of stuff. So, you know, history, uh, not 10 is execute the 10th command in the history. This is typically used as not. So the exclamation mark is uh, ex execute uh, is being what's done here, but typically it means not something. Um, then you have reading the file, uh, then you have finding and filtering advanced search stuff. Um, then you have special commands. So cat signatures, Z cut, UID, such and such and such. Then the use cases for certain things, right? So uh, print line 11 for advanced. This is in important to note. Print between these lines, print below line 11, print so on and so forth. The read the sample text file read the first 10 lines of the file, read the last 10 lines of the file, um, cut the first field, first column, filter specific keywords, sort outputs alphabetically, uh, sort outputs numerically. This would have been useful in this last thing. So let's actually do it one more time. And we're gonna use this thing that's uh, sort dash N. Okay, there you go. So this is the actual command. So you have to do it in three parts. You have the cat log, then Zeke cut duration, and then another pipe, and then you do sort dash n, and then it'll sort it for you numerically from smallest to largest. So that's very useful. And uh, let's see, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here. So use case, so sort and unique, remove duplicate values, uh, sort unique C, remove duplicate values and count the number of occurrences for each value, very useful sort and r sort values numerically and recursively rev is reverse string characters uh, cut f1 so cut field one out uh, cut d uh, dot f12 split the string on every dot and print or uh, print keep the first two fields and basically a bunch of other stuff <laughs> so i just we need to refer back to this uh, more and more. It's not, I don't, I am not going to remember all of this until I do very many uh, versions of this exercise over and over and over again until it actually becomes second nature to me and it becomes like a second language. And I'm guessing it would be the same thing for you too, unless you have a photographic memory, which if you do, then I am super jealous. But uh, yeah, this is kind of a cheat sheet for us to refer back to as we go through the rest of the room. So all right, here we go. Zeke signatures um, come. Whoa, what just happened? Uh, Zeke signatures have um, rules and event correlations to find noteworthy activities. So um, it's basically using, I'm guessing, several databases to try to find the signatures of any of the packets or any of the frames uh, that are of importance that should be noticed and paid attention to. So the unique signature could all either fall under condition or it could fall under action and the condition would be the header so filtering the pack uh, filtering the packet headers for specific source and destination addresses protocols and port numbers um, and then of course content filtering the packet payload for any specific value or pattern and then under the action is create the signature log file in case of a match and then trigger a Zeke script if necessary. So those are the, the basic things that would happen if it noticed certain types of signatures and what it would do. Um, then you have the, uh, so the conditions that would elicit the action essentially, right? 
And so then these are the condition fields, right? So the header, and then this is how it's uh, the syntax looks like inside the filters. And then the content, the context, the action itself, comparison operator, so is equal to, is not equal to, is less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. Uh, filters accept string, numeric, and regex values. So Zeek, read the sample, and then use the sample signature. So it can use the sig extension. So it says use signature file right here. Um, so it can use the extension. It's gonna ignore checksum errors and it's gonna read the pcap file. So uh, view signature, this is the signature itself. So IP protocol TCP destination port 80, payload is password. So anything that has to do with password and event is clear text password found is what it would do. And so let's create a simple signature to detect clear text passwords. So it's kind of similar to writing Yara rules or snort rules, right? So remember, Zeek signatures support regex, uh, which means something like this, uh, matches any character zero or more times. The rule with ma will match a when a password phrase is detected in the packet payload. Once the match occurs, Zeek will generate an alert and create an additional log file, which is called signature log and notice log, right? So if you run it, same command that it was before, I think. It, is it reading, reading the previous one? No, it's reading a different one. So it's reading the HTTP PCAP, and then it's looking for the stuff that's inside this signature file for HTTP passwords, I'm guessing. And then when you run it, you're gonna have the password sig, you're going to have the notice log, and you're going to have the signature log output. And then you read notice log and cut, you know, originating ID and response and the message. And so originating ID, the response and the message, right? So uh, the signatures log will read, uh, so you can do the source address, destination address, signature ID, and event message source destination i'm guessing that this is the signature id and the event message so we can go through the signature log and cut whatever the message would be and in this particular situation uh, what is it looking for it's looking for everything i think this is kind of the whole event that just came out of that signature so it's a post uh, request that was sent to this particular file on the server and this is the protocol not I don't think HTTP HTTP is a protocol I'm sorry so that is the protocol and the host is this whole thing excuse me the host is this and the user agent is this right so the notice log Etc. So yeah, these are just sample outputs and I'm pretty sure we're going to have to run our own commands to try to find certain things. So that was the example for what a clear text submission of a password. And so in this case, an FTP brute force is another example. So we create this signature to try to run it against the file. So you would do the same to read it and then you use the signature for the FTP admin which is the sample signature that we just created. And it would put out all of these logs for us. Um, and then we're just gonna read through the signature log and try to uh, cut the source address, destination address, event message, and sub message, and then sort uh, R, which uh, I gotta remember what that is again. <laughs> uh, sort reverse maybe, that's what that is, it might be, I don't know. And of course, unique. So you wanna see all the unique inputs so our rule shows that there are multiple login attempts with account names containing the admin phrase. The output gives us great information to notice if there is a brute force attempt. This signature can be considered a case signature while it is accurate and works fine. We need global signatures to detect the known threats and anomalies. So then let's optimize it and make it detect all possible FTP brute attempts. So this is the updated one. So let's look at what the previous one was. So this is the previous one, um, signature FTP, and it's looking for admin, uh, TCP protocol, user, admin, 
I guess. And then event is FTP login attempt detected. So this is FTP brute, same protocol, 530 login incorrect, and then FTP brute force attempt. And then there's another one that is username. So there's the brute, which is exactly the same. And then we added another rule for username and it's looking for same protocol, but it's going to look for the user with anything before it and anything after it, FTP username input found, right? So when you run that and run the same commands to try to find some more stuff, you'll see that new events have shown up and then there's a correlating message for each one. So there was a username input, brute force attempt, username input, brute force attempt, right? And that is the case. And uh, if I remember correctly, we actually ran some uh, snort rules and the snort rules required to find things by event code or event uh, the the basically the number for the event and so uh, the event 530 means that they attempted to log in but they failed the login so it's not going to say failed login all the time it's going to say login incorrect or something like that but the 530 number implies that they tried to log in and they failed and that's a code that you can search for that's going to be consistent across most rules if not all rules so uh, we are going to now go into task 5 uh, the the exercise files for task 5 and we're going to investigate some of those things and hopefully we can find some good answers <laughs> hopefully we can find them quickly how about that not with too much trial and error how about that uh, so let's jump into it and see what we can find okay so we got to go into the task 5 file And what we got here, there's the FTP and there's HTTP. So there's an HTTP PCAP file. We're going to create the HTTP signature that's shown in the task that we just were at. And then we're going to investigate the PCAP file. So uh, first and foremost, let me go find that HTTP signature. And then from there, we're going to try to find some stuff inside the actual PCAP file. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go inside the actual HTTP PCAP file. I'm going to do nano, uh, I guess, what is it? HTTP password.sig is what they called it. So we'll call it exactly that. And it's right here. Oh, I mean, maybe it was already created for us, huh? I think that's what it was because I didn't even have to type anything. And as soon as I did it, yeah, it's already in there. So I didn't even have to do anything. So since it's already made for me, I'm just going to run the Zeek against that signature file so that I can try to see if I can find anything of note, right? So the command is going to be Zeek C read HTTP.pcap. And I want you to do it with the signature file, HTTP password.sig. Let's see what we get. Oh, you know what? My mistake, because I just assumed that it was good. I didn't even verify that the lines of code or the lines for the payload and everything are literally left blank. So there is there is no information in here and I should have verified this. So this is my bad. Uh, so we're going to adjust this to read exactly what it says, which is dot asterisk password dot asterisk. That's that one. And then the next one is going to be clear text password found is basically what we want to type for the message. And that should be good. So clear text, whatever, it doesn't need to be perfect password found exclamation. And so now control O enter will write it and then control X will exit. And now I can run the Zeek command and it should actually give me something. There you go. So now we have our log files. Excellent. So the question again was to investigate the file and uh, investigate what is the source IP of the first event. And the hint says that we can find it in the signature log or the notice log, obviously. So let's read through the signature log, I guess, and see what we can find. I mean, so I think there's only two the way that it looks like. 
and uh, the so we I tried to filter for the UID, the uh, the ID of the original host, the ID of the responding host, uh, the message and the submitted data. I think that's what that is. And so it should be this. So let me see if this is the correct answer. Hopefully it is. Otherwise I have made a tremendous boo-boo. That is correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> what is the source port of the second event? So the source port of the second event. So I got to go through the filters and try to find the source port filter. Oh, okay, so it's as simple as just doing origin, origin, originating port, I guess that's probably what it is. Um, so originating port would be the, the, uh, the source port. So we can run the command and read through it again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of get rid of these things just to make it a little bit simpler. And I'm going to search for uh, ID orig P and ID respond P. So now it should be yeah, way nicer and cleaner. And so the ID of the second source port is this thing. That should be the one and let's paste that and see what that is. Yep, that is correct. So now we're going to investigate the connection.log file. And what is the total number of sent and received packets from source port 38706? And so <laughs> let's see uh, what we can find here. I'm kind of shocked that that command actually worked on the first try. Um, I did use the hint just so I can find out what I'm supposed to search for, which is originating packets and response packets. And then we already knew this originating port. But then I just added this kind of as literally like a shot in the dark just to see if it'll stick. And so it was the pipe and then grep. And then this is the port that we're looking for, right? So this is uh, grep is a search command essentially. So it cut all of those things that we asked for and it gave us the, the freaking <laughs> information. So we have um, right here, 11 plus nine should be 20. So that should be the total. I can't believe it. That actually worked on the first try. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked that that actually worked on the first try. Um, okay, so now we're going to uh, create another global rule uh, that is shown to investigate the FTP PCAP file and investigate the notice log. What is the number of, uh, or excuse me, uh, do it and then investigate the FTP PCAP file. So we should have an FTP PCAP file in here somewhere. And is there one in here? Oh no, I'm sorry. I need to go back one and we need to go inside the FTP directory. There you go. And so now in here, we are going to nano FTP brute force signature. And so we're going to modify this signature file according to the rules that they created in their rule set. And I'm pretty sure that there's going to be one where they're not going to give us any kind of a template and we have to create all of this by ourselves. So. I'm, I'm trying to retain as much information as I can right now, but it feels kind of scary to try to think about it like this. So, uh, okay. So signature FTP username, uh, is going to be what exactly? Okay. So it's going to be dot asterisk capital user, and then another dot and another asterisk. That's that. And it's going to be FTP username input found. And then the next one is the payload down here. And we can go back and do it is dot asterisk 530 because that is going to be exactly incorrect. Basically, that's what we're looking for like so. And so brute force attempt, I think that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to control O enter and control X 
And now we're going to run Zeke against the ftp.pcap. And we're going to use the signature file ftp root for signature. That took more than half a second, so it must be a pretty big one. Okay, so there we go. Now we found, or we got our logs, excuse me. So now we want to go through the notice log file and see what we can find in the notice log file. So cat notice dot log and Zeke cut. We want the UID. We want the sort, I guess, and unique and see what we can find here. I guess it, they both need to be separated by um, a pipe. Whoa, there you go. I mean, there's a lot of them. There is a lot. I can't, I can definitely not do this by myself. So I know that that got the results. Now I need to find a count for this. So I'm going to go refer to that Kung Fu list of things that it gave us to see if I can find a count. Okay, so we're going to try one of two commands. The first one is going to be WCL. Let's see what that gives us. That is the command. I didn't even need to try the second command. That is ingenious. I can't believe this is amazing. I love it so much. I love the fact that it's working as well as it's working. I think it's like beginner's luck or something. And, for, you know, 1,413 is the right answer. So uh, the count command. So this thing counts basically every line that comes out of this entire thing. It just counts how many lines there are. And so we got 14, 13. And so what is the number of FTP brute signature matches? Okay, so signatures dot log and Zeke cut uh, signature ID. And then we're going to grep for FTP root. And then we're going to count the lines. Okay, let's hope that's right. Okay, cool, that is right. So we had to look through the signatures lock, we cut the signature ID, and from the signature ID we grepped, uh, we searched for FTP brute basically, and then from that we counted the lines, and that gave us 1410 as a total. And that's it for task five, actually. So we are wrapped with this. Um, I do need to make sure that this gets edited and put out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this right now. We're going to cut the recording. Uh, we have gone through the first five tasks of Zeke. And then what we're going to do is come back tomorrow and record the remaining five tasks. Well, actually, it's only four tasks because the there's a conclusion. And so I'll just I'll kind of just show you where we're at right now. Just to refresh the page. So we have our answers in here. So we just did Zeke signatures. And we went through all of these exercises. And we got these answers for you. And so now we got six, seven, eight, nine, and then the conclusion. And so there's the fundamentals of Zeke, which is uh, another or Zeke scripts, excuse me, fundamentals and then z scripts with scripts and signatures and then these are pretty hefty uh, tasks so this is going to be fun we're going to learn a lot and zeke is a very very powerful tool it's one of the foremost tools it's i love it because every company that creates a tool is like we are the foremost of yada 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 so uh, we are going to go through all of this stuff tomorrow uh, because it is kind of running late right now and I need to make sure that I actually edit this so that it's ready for your viewing pleasure and for your learning pleasure. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna call this and this is gonna be part one of the Zeke uh, video, the Zeke 
bro room. If you like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell, you will get notified when the next video comes out tomorrow. And uh, or, you know, if if you're not a subscriber and you find this later, then you can just go and find part two. So it's not going to be hard. But if you are a subscriber and you're watching this and you want to make sure that you get access to it right away, then make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified as soon as the next video comes out. And if you're not a subscriber and so on and so forth, just make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell because the video will come out at least once a day. And uh, this last week it was kind of hectic, so I'm trying to kind of rearrange my schedule and get back on the multiple posts per day. But at the very least, you will get one post per day, one new video per day. And I'm going to do that for as long as I possibly can. The link in the description below will give you access to the subscriber only rooms of Try Hack Me because this was a subscriber only room and it does require a paid subscription with Try Hack Me to do it. And it's only 12 bucks, but if you use the link in the description, it ends up becoming seven bucks. So you get a nice little discount on top of that. And uh, you can just run the exercises, or you could always download Zeke Bro on your own computer and go through the video and the exercises like that so whatever you want to do is totally fine with me just wanted you to know what your options are this is your boy hank hackerson at hank hacks hackers and i hope you found some use in this video you learned some good things about zeke and uh, we will continue pick up from where we left off tomorrow and yeah that's pretty much it if no one else loves you hank loves you peace love and chicken grease i will talk to you soon bye